Hello there, my friendly space Rambos, and welcome to part 3 from my coverage of the badass Katakan regiments. I wanted to apologize, since this regiment is taking a lot longer to cover than the ones I did previously. However, juggling with so many topics at the moment kinda prevents me from doing them more often. In today's episode, we are gonna talk about some unique Katakan booby traps, their war gear, and my personal favorite, their special knives. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about the jungle fighters, shall we? Katakans are experts at utilizing booby traps. For, in the jungle, even the slightest scratch can prove to be fatal, as necrotic bacteria swarm into any open wound and gangrene quickly sets in. Growing up in the harsh environment of a deaf world, catacans take advantage of these harsh conditions by rigging traps from natural materials on the battlefield, such as vines and tree branches. They also use a variety of especially built devices to create Devil's Gardens, areas where the most innocuous looking mound of leaves or tree root can conceal a shredder mine or plasma charge. These traps can also take the form of deadfalls, spiked pits, snares, spring mines or toe poppers. Many new recruits mistakenly believe that the object of mines and traps is to kill or maim the enemy. This of course is a secondary function, but their primary value is in disrupting and slowing an enemy advance into certain areas. After several encounters with booby traps, many enemies are liable to become demoralized, overly cautious and spread out, leaving them vulnerable to a well-placed ambush. There are three types of mines commonly employed by the Katakan regiments. The Shredder Mines Explosive fragmentation charges mounted on an upright plate hurls the blast in a specific direction, creating an expanding cone of destruction filled with white-hot fragments of metal. Shredder Mines are ideal for covering trails, streams or paths. Common mines of this type include Triplex Fall Type 12 Repudiator Automine, Armageddon Hammerhead Area Denial Weapon, and the Necromunda Pattern Widowmaker Anti-Personnel Savager. The Spring Mines Spring Mines receive this moniker because these devices spring into the air before detonating. They are particularly effective against dispersed targets. However, a wary squad leader will advance with a trooper moving ahead on point to try to reduce the effectiveness of these traps. Common mines of this type include Necromunda Pattern Jumping Snap Anti-Personnel Leaper, the Gyarian Type 14 Vertical Blast Device, and the Martian Type 61 Fragmentation Mine. Plasma Charges most anti-personnel mines employ blast waves and shrapnel to injure or kill their victim, but a plasma charge renders them relatively ineffective against enemies wearing heavy armor. Larger tyrannid creatures and armored walkers are also likely to survive even a close proximity detonation from a spring or shredder mine. Where such opponents are expected, plasma charges are most useful. This fires a blast of superheated plasma at whatever triggers it, inflicting hideous and invariably fatal damage. The greatest drawback to the plasma charges is their small detonation pattern compared to more conventional munitions. Common types of plasma charges include All standard plasma weapon photonic hydrogen fuel flasks, the Necromundan Cyclops anti-armor blast sphere, and the Golgotha pattern Mark 90 KW energy mine. Circumstances may sometimes preclude the employment of purpose-built munitions for booby traps. However, it is very simple to improvise a variety of basic traps from natural materials and commonly available ammunition. Some examples of these include The Lashing Branch 
Locating a springy branch at head, waist, or knee height, the twigs along the branch are sharpened to a fine point. The branch is then carefully bent back, and the line is used to secure it. The thinner the better. Tied off with a slip knot so that the branch is under tension. The line is then strung as a tripwire below, where the branch was originally positioned. When an enemy trips this line, the branch is arranged so that it will lash forward and impale the unfortunate victim. The Spike Pit, nicknamed the Devil's Maw. A small pit is dug to about a knee deep. The base of it is then lined with sharpened spikes, and then more spikes are placed around the edges, so they point downwards towards the base of the pit. The pit is then camouflaged using leaves, grasses, or whatever else is available. When an enemy steps into the pit, their foot will be impaled by the spikes at the bottom. As they attempt to pull their foot free, the downward pointing spikes will inflict even more injury. A common variant of this is to place dangerous life forms into the bottom of the pit, as this encourages an even faster extrication of the limb and an increased chance of injury, apart from whatever stings or bites the life forms may inflict. Buried Bullets nicknamed Toe Poppers. These consist of a basic autogun shell, bolt round or shotgun shell, buried so that its base is resting on a nail, rock or sharpened spike, and the tip of the shell is just below the surface of soft ground. When the enemy steps on the tip of the round, their weight pushes it back onto the striker, triggering the round directly under their foot, causing moderate to severe damage. As far as the regular war gear is concerned, the average Katakan guardsman, if such a thing actually exists, will usually be outfitted with the following. The Mark IV Las Carbine. This is the standard ranged weapon employed by Katakan forces. It is a lighter, cut down version of the Las Gun, and has a lower rate of fire and a shorter range but is easier to carry and aim, and often possesses a folding stock. Las carbines can be fired using only one hand, increasing your badass factor by 100%. Four charge packs for the last carbine, a flak vest and sometimes a flak helmet, three frag grenades, two smoke grenades, poor weather gear, a rucksack, basic toolkit, mess kit and water canteen, two weeks rations, a stammer. This is the reverse of the automated alarm device known as the screamer. It generates its own sound waves to cancel out ambient sounds and noises made by moving personnel in a small area. The grapnel. Grapnels use a small launcher or gas gun to fire a hooked or magnetic grapnel connected to the launcher with a coiled 100 meters length of thin but strong line. Once the grapnel attaches to a desired spot, such as a rooftop, a guardsman can manually climb the line or activate a powered winch. Common sets of these can hold 150 kilograms, while the best can hold up to 200 kilograms. Blanket and sleeping bag, a rechargeable lamp pack, dog tags, Imperial Infantryman's Uplifting Primer, which given how the Katakans are, is probably not even worth using as toilet paper. And finally, the Katakan Knife. A knife is not only the tool and the weapon of a Katakan warrior, but also a mark of his status. The steel alloy used for these knives is only found on the jungle planet of Katakan. A well-owned Katakan blade will never rust, and its edge will always remain keen even after continuous use. They are highly valued and sought after throughout the Imperium. Many counterfeit copies are sold by roaming rogue traders, but the only sure way to get an authentic Katakan knife is to take it from a Katakan. This is no easy task, as the Katakans place a huge value on their knives. It is said that a Katakan would rather give up his own arm than his knife. Indeed, they do not just see their knives as brutally effective weapons, but also as great tools, useful for hacking through foliage, as a climbing aid, a first aid kit, 
and a true lifeline in the deadly environments in which they fight. Each Katakan learns the craft of making knives from his parents, and making one's own knife is considered a test of adulthood on the deaf world. While the basic design of the knives remains the same, there are some subtle variations between family groups and individuals, depending on the height and preference of the user. The following three are the most common types found throughout the jungle fighters' regiments. The Katakan Fang Measuring up to 20 inches of gleaming steel, the Katakan Fang is the most common type of Katakan knife. Equally useful for cutting your way through jungle or a deviant Eldar, the Katakan Fang is renowned throughout thousands of star systems. This knife is also used for settling disputes between Katakans. Usually, the knife is placed in the center of a fighting pit, and the combatants must each strive to get a hold of the knife. The duel ends when one fighter draws blood, though this can often mean death as well. The Night Reaper Smaller than the other designs, the blackened blade of the Night Reaper is especially suitable for infiltration and night missions, when light reflecting from a blade can mean the difference between life and death. The blade itself is triangular, and any wound caused by the Night Reaper is unlikely to clot or heal. Catacans are also known to poison these knives using one of the many types of animal and plant venoms native to their inhospitable planet. The Devil's Claw Named after the fearsome predator known as the Katakan Devil, this is the largest type of the traditional knives of the Katakans. Anywhere between 3 and 4 feet long, the Devil's Claw is closer to a short sword than an actual knife. It is used mainly on the battlefield in close quarters, and it has even achieved a fearsome reputation among the orcs, who call it Dakata. The blade itself is hollow and half-filled with mercury, to give it an even greater swinging power. Power swords wielded by senior members of the Katakan regiments are often identical in design to this Devil's Claw. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about some of the specialties and war gear of the Katakans for today. Would you like a Katakan knife of your own? Which type would you prefer? Let me know in the comments below. Was this video enjoyable or informative? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for more videos. Thank you very much for watching and I wish you all a great day. The Emperor Protects.